G'day guys, welcome back to Cakes by Chopper. Today we have the chocolate shark attack in a pool of jelly. This is my spin on the Woman's Day pool cake. If you remember that, there's a picture. Um, I think I went one better, so take that, y'all biddies, your move. If you want to see what happened behind the scenes, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and also TikTok. But I'll see you over there. Links are all in the description. For now, let's get started on this cake. The first thing you're going to want to do is prepare your modeling chocolate. So I've got 12 tablespoons of glucose, because I'm doing a double batch, and then four tablespoons of hot water. I've heated them up so they combine together really well. Because I don't have access to any corn syrup, I'm using this glucose and the water as a substitute. You've just got to dilute the glucose because it's a little bit thicker. I've microwaved some white chocolate for a minute and then put it on top of this boiling water. And we're just going to move that around. You can see it starts to melt. So we're going to just keep that moving until you've got a nice white melted chocolate. Now the chocolate is silky smooth and melted. I've lined a jug with a Ziploc bag. We're going to pour in the contents of our glucose and water. Stir that through. Now it doesn't look like it's fully mixed together, but that's exactly what you want. You stop just as it starts to seize. And you might think, oh, I need to mix that more, but you actually don't. You're just gonna pop it in your Ziploc bag, seal it up, and then place it somewhere cool and dry, nice and flat, and it should be ready in half an hour for you to use. Some people say to use it like in 12 hours. This doesn't, you don't need to. You honestly don't, it'll start working for you. So I'm gonna place that somewhere cool and then we can start icing our cake. For our cake, because this is only gonna be a small cake with a jelly topper, we're just gonna split that in half. So we go through and give the cake a nice generous filling of ganache, put it together and then give it a light crumb coat over the top. This is gonna help create a seal around the acetate that will stop it from leaking. While our modeling chocolate's still cooling, I've made the jellies. Here's a very important tip. This is the cake tin that I've cooked the cake in. So this is what we'll be setting the jelly in with the cake inside as well. I've measured out the acetate and got it to the right length so it wraps around and overlays. You can see it automatically wants to roll this way. We're actually going to flip that and roll it reverse so it gives us a nice firm stance. All right, while your cake is in the fridge, the modeling chocolate is ready. We're going to bend that up a bit, take it out, and it's just like fondant. You're gonna knead it and warm it up and get it ready to be pliable, and you can start molding your shark. As you can see, the more I work this, the softer it's getting, and it's getting more to a fondant-like consistency. Um, if you're wondering whether you can use fondant or not, you cannot, because fondant will absorb the moisture and bloom and just ruin all your hard work. I also have to send a massive shout out to Cakes and Crafts by Cass. As you know, she's my homegirl, and also Karen, who is the dark side of cake. She works with modeling chocolate a lot. She gave me a lot of advice on how to get this perfect. So thank you so much. I do appreciate you guys. If you want to check out their channels, just check the cards at the top. And as you guys know, I am thoroughly obsessed with the Sugar Arts colors. Today I'm using turquoise waters. This will take a little bit of kneading through because obviously you're trying to work a color into a cold chocolate. And look at that, in a matter of minutes, you've got a beautiful turquoise modeling chocolate. Once you're happy with the color of your chocolate, we're gonna roll out a nice circle. I'm gonna use the tin that I set it in to get the same shape and pop it on top of our cake. Before we prepare the cake for the acetate, I'm going to remove the sticky double-sided tape that holds it together, just so I'm not fumbling with it. This cake is quite cold because I had it in the freezer and I'm about to apply some chocolate. It'll set quite fast. So I wanna get this chocolate on around the rim and then get the acetate on as quick as possible. But you do need to create a very tight seal so you don't get a jelly leakage. Another way to secure it is go through with your finger and push the modeling chocolate out to the acetate. Okay, so now that we've pushed through and got the cake ready for the jelly, we're gonna start on our shark. What I'm going to do is take my rolling pin, cover that with some cling film, and I'm going to start by pushing that into the chocolate and start molding around. I want about three quarters of the shark because I really want him coming out of the water and looking fantastic. Now with the tip of the shark, you want to bring the top nose up further than the jaw. It's gonna come out too, and don't worry if you've gone a bit too thin, because the best thing about modeling chocolate I've found, I can literally slice a piece, tear off what I need, add that to the bottom, and then it'll just smooth into place. You just push it on, and then you can rub out any seam, and it'll just smooth down like it was always there. So I'm gonna continue shaping the body. It's a good idea to always have a picture of something that you're working at, because a lot of the times when we try and make something, 
we think of what it is and it might not actually be the same. If you've got something to refer to, you're gonna get a much closer representation. Now my shark's going to be angled, so I'm gonna give him a base. So keeping that tool in there will help keep the shape that you want and the mouth open. I'll give my shark some little brows. Now I just push them on two little dots that I've loosely rolled where I want his eyes to be. I have the perfect cup to stand him in. So I'm just gonna sit that there for a moment while I work on some fins. I'm literally just making some shark fin shapes split down the middle of the flat end, just so when it comes time to blend it on, it's a lot easier. If your modeling chocolate becomes a little bit soft and hard to work with, just sit it aside and let it come back to a cooler temperature because it can get to a point where it's too soft and it just becomes really hard to work with. We're gonna go around the top of his lip and draw in this line that separates the bottom of the mouth and the top of the mouth from the inside. For the teeth, we're just gonna take a little piece of the modeling chocolate and we're going to roll that out. Do a couple of these for the teeth. What we're going to do is let them cool down. So once it's firmed up a little bit, you're gonna place it on the table and then cut. Just the length of the teeth that you want, we're going to cut the strip. The technique I found that's the easiest, so we put it on an angle and then put little slits like this. Just the width of the teeth that you want, not cutting all the way through because you're leaving basically a gum area. Then we will carefully pick that up and then put it on the other angle. Then just putting slits going the other way, which is going to create little teeth. And then we can use a toothpick or a pin tool to just knock those little triangles out. Try not to break it. Now we can bring our shark back over. And what we're going to do is align them on the inside. And we're putting those under that first line. We're going to go in where we put the extra. We're just going to push in and sort of anchor those teeth into the chocolate. The more time and detail you spend on the teeth, the better it'll look, obviously. I like to put four rows of teeth, but as you can see, it looks fine with just the one on the top. To secure the top teeth in, I've went and done the same process, but pushed them in from the outside. Then I rolled a little bit of snake and then applied that to the side. So now I've got the shark almost ready. I've made my jelly and I've got it sitting just here. I've put some aside to crumble up around the base of the shark, you'll see. I've made a little bit darker for a bottom layer. Now that I've fine-tuned his body shape, because I want him sort of breaching out of the water, and I'm going to trim this back part of the shark and put that around the front, just to give it a bit more stability. And we'll do actually do that really thin onto the cake. I'm gonna start with the dorsal fin, which I'm just going to slightly warm up these areas around here. Place it where it should sit on the shark and you just smooth that until it looks like it was always there and not joined on. Same with his fins, I'm going to position them where I think they look the best. So there we have the look of our breaching shark. That's onto my favourite part, we're going to take some silver shimmer dust. I'm going to do his underside first with silver. I'm just going to pack that on so he's nice and shiny. I like to mix a little bit of silver and then add some black and then we can lighten that up to be a really nice dark gray. The reason we're not using a food paint on the body is the jelly reacts with that and it goes cloudy and just peels the paint off. Go through, give him the coloring, darkest gray on top, a little bit of white around the front of the mouth and gradiate that down the sides of him. Now for his gums, I've got a red here that I'm gonna use a little bit of. And then using my fluffy brush with the black and the silver, Pop that right down into the middle and to give him some depth inside his mouth. And I'm just gonna go brush up his teeth ever so gently. Now, because it's a great white shark, we want him to be a little bit intimidating. I'm gonna go put some blood splatter around with the same brush. and look like there's blood splattered everywhere. I'm gonna take two little balls of modeling chocolate, roll that around in the black, and then we're gonna place them into the shark's eye sockets. And of course, don't forget to take some shots of social media. I've taken the cake out of the fridge transfer it back into the pan that I cooked it in. I'm gonna use my knuckles just to gently make the surface a bit uneven and this will help stopping the jelly from sliding. Pop our little shark in. Now that I've anchored the shark in, I'm just gonna smooth out those bottom pieces. So I transferred my dark layer of jelly into a piping bag and I'm going to lower that in and gently snip the edge and let that go in very gently. 
Now I'm gonna pop that into the fridge to set that first layer and then we'll plop this in the fridge with it because we wanna crumble that up to put around the base of the shark. Now that our first layer of jelly has half set, we're going to pour in the lighter color and we're gonna do that ever so slowly. And you're only gonna add a little bit more, not too much. Now we pop that back into the fridge to fully set. Now that the shark cake is out of the fridge, I took the acetate off. I admit I was a little hasty and I ripped the front of it, which pulled more jelly away. Easy fix though. So we're gonna take some of our modeling chocolate roll out a border that's going to go up and cover half the jelly and I've diced up the jelly here to place on top around the cake so we're going to do that we'll put some wood grain fake look in it and then use some petal dust to turn it brown we're going to place the minced jelly around the base of the shark and then scatter random pieces around to make it look like the water I'm going to take a little bit of white food paint I'm going to gently tap on the water basically around the shark, give it a little bit of depth and dimension. Then with some brown petal dust, I'm just gonna go around and cover that modeling chocolate on the bottom and make it look a little bit more of a wood grain. With another small piece of modeling chocolate, we're just gonna make the sign that says shark. So even that off top and bottom. And then I'm going to just jagger out the edges. Okay, again with some brown petal dust. Just gonna tap that out. Oh, <laughs> don't forget to do, don't forget to do the wood paneling. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna use a sculpting tool to write shark. So S-H-A-R-K. Now with a thin little brush, I'm gonna go through with some edible food paint in the red and paint in those letters. Now using a little bit of the off cuts and then apply our sign. So there you go guys, you have your chocolate shark attack cake in a pool of jelly. That's a lot to say, it's gonna be an amazing title. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also tell me what you'd like to see me make in the future. And if you're not following me on social media, now's your time to do it. Links are all in the description. Also, as always, check out the cool creator I've chosen to feature this week on my channel. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll catch you next time.